welcome to my Japanese Wagyu beef tour. I'm down here in Kobushima in the bottom of Japan and I am spending the next three days learning all about Wagyu beef. I have just had the most amazing lunch at a soba noodle house which was phenomenal. We flew in from Auckland last night and we had the most amazing yakitori dinner. So come and join me as I show you the world of Wagyu beef and the truck behind me. shoe protectors are slipping off my legs. is the name of the father, right? Okay. Again, okay, the father is in a paddock a bit further over, like when we go down the bus, a bit further over there, and he gets kept by himself. Okay. And once he's had some babies, the babies get lined up through here. And so this is the babies and the mums. Yeah. And the mums are looking after the babies here. There's, there's only one male on this farm, and there's 10 females. And the 10 females are also kept over there in the, in the shed over there. And they're, um, he gets to kind of have babies with each of them. So it's his little harem. He's living his best life. Also explained is that um, so all of these are kuroge washu. So you know how we had talked about the four different kinds of yeah. um, of wagyu. So the kuroge is the one that like 90% of the wagyu are, are the kuroge, so the blackhead one. And um, probably most of the animals that come off this farm will be A3 through to A5. So all these guys are in here. So the other uh, the other pens that we saw you, that you saw. Hello. What you doing? So the other pen that you saw is the like the nursery pen where they've got the new baby calves and in this area they are all getting fattened up. So on his ear tags, you can see at the, at the top there there's a five digit number yeah. and below there's a four digit plus another one. So there's actually five and five, right? So that, that, that um, ten digit number is a unique identifier for the Wagyu. So each, each Wagyu in Japan, they have a unique identifying number, like a barcode. Wow. Um, so to, to trace it, yeah. yeah. Uh, the blue tag, yeah. okay, it says this one, 851765. Okay. That's, um, that's the farm that the animal came from. So not all, of the, not all of the animals are originally from this farm. Right, right. So when they come from another farm, they get that blue tag with, um, with that located number on it. And, and that's also on the top left up there, that's the R4519. Where he go? 28 months old, so, oh, wow. so, so basically when they hit about 20, 28 months, then they're uh, sent to be become me. Yeah. So I've just asked if they ex can escape. Uh, Japan, um, uh, oh, you have um, earthquakes in Japan? Yeah. And he says like, in the occasion where there's a bit of an earthquake and things kind of, you know, start shaking, um, there's a possibility that they'll kind of jump and go make a run for it. Yeah. And, and you look for them, yeah, of course you do. <laughs> Very rare occasion that one would you know, escape. <laughs> then it's a, it's a big job to find it yeah. and make sure you find it, right? Mm. It's, it's... So the reason that they've kept in uh, pens like this is they need to control the level of food that uh, they're getting. Um, obviously, if they're free-range cows, then you can't get the level of marbling that is required to have that beautiful wagyu beef. Uh, 
Uh, behind me is an active volcano. I believe it went, uh, it erupted uh, maybe a couple of years back. Um, so it's very active still. You can see little clouds of smoke up the top. So uh, let's hope she ain't so active today. Good morning and welcome to day two of our Wagyu beef tour. I am in Kagoshima which is the southernmost tip of Japan and we had the best day yesterday. We flew down from Tokyo and then we went on a farm tour which was really super interesting around like how the cattle are looked after and what they're fed on and everything like that and then we went and had the most amazing Wagyu beef dinner last night here in Kagoshima. So today's going to be a little bit of the same we're going to learn about how they process the animals and then we are taking a flight back up to Tokyo I am NOT sure what tonight brings um, but no doubt it will be epic because we've just been taken such good care of here down in Japan so follow along I hope you're enjoying and um, I am going to go and get some coffee because this four hour time difference is having me up at about 4 a.m. so your girl needs some coffee. So we're about to head into the meat processing plant. you just saw was an A5 wagon. This is between the 6th and 7th? Between the 6th and 7th rib, yeah. And this is uh, it's A5. A5. Yeah. Which you might use. Excellent stuff. Wow, look at that. Very nice. This is what, what we came for. Yeah, that. <laughs> Carving up. We'll Let's have a slice right now, shall we? Yeah. It's pretty good. beef tour and we are about to head off to a meat academy and the meat academy is where like chefs come to learn how to carefully prepare wagyu beef here in Japan but in the meantime it is a beautiful day here in Takasaki and uh, we've got a full-on day from 9 till 3 all learning about it and the chefs that are on our tour are really excited about learning how to process this so follow along it should be a very interesting day
I'll try that again. Um, meat, but avoid that. That's not what they do.